Okay, I wanted to make a video that reviews block diagrams. Okay, so I'm starting here with figures from the book. So you see from the book, you have uh, three different important cases. You have G1 that's in series with G2. All right, and so that's a pretty easy case if you have transfer functions in series. The um, overall transfer function is just the product, okay? Next, we have the parallel case where we have two, two paths. Here's an input applied to both G1 and G2. And you have to connect that back. When these come back together, there has to be something that joins those signals and is joined with a summation, okay? So that makes sense that the transfer function uh, can reduce to G2 plus G1. Okay, and the next one, I wanted to uh, shift a little bit away in the notation because the book uses G1 and then a feedback path G2. And from the notes that um, I provided you, um, the notation changed slightly and I wanted to point that out. That here's a G and here's an H. And I think that's more common in the control literature to see the feedback path have a transfer function labeled H and the feed forward transfer function is G. Okay, so I think the first two cases, the series and the parallel case are pretty straightforward. But when I was learning control theory, I worked through this derivation of the feedback case several times because I was trying to understand it. And I think if you do that, if you'll sit down and be able to derive this on your own, that helps you gain some insight in how this works, okay? All right, so let's go through this so that you'll know the steps. All right, so what I do here is I take a look at the input-output relationship for summers and transfer functions, okay? So by that, I mean, let's take a look at this summer. Okay, for this summer, the output is U, and the inputs are R, and then you subtract off the input V, okay? So straightforward enough for the summer. All right, then let's consider this transfer function G. The output is Y, the input is U, so that would be G times U, okay? And then finally, for the feedback transfer function, the output is V, and the input is Y. Okay, so now I have three equations, and I can start back substituting things. So what I notice here is that this R minus V is equal to U, so I could substitute that in, and now we get that Y is equal to G times R minus V. All right, then I find another substitution where I see V is equal to HY. So I can, I notice over here, here's the V, and I can come down and say Y is equal to G times R minus H Y. So at this point, I've eliminated the intermediate signals and I just have the output signal Y. I'll make this in red. The output signal Y and the input signal R. There's no other signals, the rest of these are um, transfer functions, okay? So in other words, I eliminated U and V because those were intermediate signals, okay? So from there, it's just a matter of doing algebra. So I, I, I distribute the G across, GR minus GHY, move Y to the other side and factor that out, and it becomes one plus GH, is equal to gr, and then solve for the transfer function. Move the r down, and move the one plus gh to the denominator, and now I have this feedback transfer function. Okay, so next I'll apply these three different transfer function simplification rules for an example, and I want you to be able to do this on the online exam. Here's a block diagram that shows a system that's interconnected and we have a feedback path with negative feedback, okay? 
And so let's go ahead and get started on finding the overall transfer function between the output y and the input r. <coughs> okay, so I get started by looking for patterns, all right? And what I see here is an initial transfer function, 6 over s plus 2. And then that's in series with this parallel combination. So the green part is the parallel combination. So if I reduce the parallel combination to something um, that it simplifies to, then I would have um, the green in the green transfer function, the overall green transfer function. Let me just make that whole thing a big block. Okay, cascaded with the yellow. Okay, and then finally we have a feedback path that would play the role of H in our previous example, okay? So, let's identify some things. Um, we could say G1 is 6 over S plus 2, all right? And then the overall transfer function G2, the part in green, we could say that is 3, and we check the sign on the summer, it's plus for both of them, so plus 2 over s, all right, so we now have g1, we have g2, and then the overall g is just g1 times g2. So I call it g because if you go back to that previous example, we had g as the feed forward transfer function, and then we had h in the feedback path, and we know that this transfer function is g over 1 plus gh. Okay, so that's the pattern we look for. Okay, and now that I know that, I can write down the transfer function. y over r is g, which we have defined, and then h is going to be simply 4 in the example. Here's h. Okay g over 1 plus gh. And now it's just a matter of simplifying everything. Okay, so you know me, I like to do the calculations in MATLAB, and so I'll let you check on that. But when you substitute all that in and you simplify it, you end up with a transfer function 18s plus 12 over s squared plus 74s plus 48. Okay, so there's a quick simple example. Um, I'll probably give you a couple of these on your exam one, uh, an easy one for the online portion, and something that might be a little more complicated for the take-home part. All right, so I hope that helps.